What draws us to liking MMA? Is it the athleticism in the athletes, training at what is probably the highest level, or is it the technicality behind each different art in the sport? Or is it as simple as sometimes just wanting to watch someone beat the hell out of another person? Either way, the sport is fascinating, and it happens all over the world, 365 days a year. So with the help of our good friend Kaposa, who by now you have to be following on Twitter at Grabica underscore Hitman, we have compiled a list of the must-see fights from the weekend. What is up, MMA on Point family? I'm the casual Lawton Veerkant, and this is Kaposa's Corner. To start off this week, we are going to Modern Fighting Pankration in Khabarovsk, Russia. This one is gonna be an interesting start because I'm sure by now you've realized there are not only two fighters in the octagon, but four. Yes, that's right. We have a two-on-two -two situation about to happen. Now, I couldn't find hardly anything on any of these fighters, but what I do know is that Dmitry Evnitsky and Enerbek Asherbakov make quick work of their opponents, Viktor Perigin and Mukidin Razulov. Razulov is the first to go from the blue corner, and he's the only one I could find any record on, which was a 0-3 boxing record. But once he's out, Asherbakov wastes no time eliminating Perigin and causing an end to this fight only 30 seconds in. I would love to say this one surprised me, but then again, Again, it is Russia and anything can happen. Moving on to our friends at One Pride MMA for their Fight Night 43 in Jakarta, Indonesia, we see the main event between Hendrik Terrigan sitting at a 5-1 record and coming off of a win against Michael Mataheru, who is coming off of a loss and has a 3-2 record. Wasting no time, these two get into it. Now, I'm sure everyone has watched or heard about the disqualifying knee to a grounded opponent this past weekend, but that's UFC. Here at One Pride MMA, we embrace the knee. So Hendrick lands a devastating one to Michael's face, and although that doesn't knock him out, the pain on his face is visible, and the ground and pound puts a stop to this fight. Hendrick climbs to a 5-1 and one record, and I hope his future opponents watch out for those knees. You know what time it is, Kaposa's KO of the week, so we're going to MMA Series 27 in St. Petersburg, Russia. Konstantin Sheridnichenko, wielding an 8-4 record, is up against former lightweight kickboxer with 21 wins and making his second debut in MMA with the 1-0 record, Anatoly Moisev. Wonder how this one will go. Not even 30 seconds in and Konstantin is in danger. Anatoly goes to work on the torso and in what looks like a Tekken style combo, he destroys his opponent with body shots and the most beautiful spinning back kick, instantly collapsing Constantine. The replays, which were uploaded after the fact, are HD, so let's watch that combo a few more times. Constantine just didn't stand a chance once backed up against the cage, and Anatoly goes off. Anatoly moves to a 2-0 pro MMA record, and good lord, I hope he keeps this momentum going. Next, we are going to Fight Club Rush 8, no relation to the movie, in Vastoros, Sweden. We have Gare Nyland making his second pro fight and coming off of a win against Ramad Stromanis, making his first pro debut and showing a 4-1 amateur record. Record. After a few exchanges in the first, Ramadz is about to give us a textbook knockout. Landing a right flush to the face of Gare, sending him to the canvas and only to be even more finished by two beautiful hammer fists. Ramadz gets a win for his first pro fight and I'm sure he'll have some more in his future. Moving right next to me, we are going to Valor Fighting Challenge 79 in Knoxville, Tennessee. We have a double amateur debut fight between Carrington Johnson in the blue gloves and Marjorell Kirby in the red gloves. Carrington starts off by landing a nice head kick and Kirby, with a wrestling background, tries for the takedown to buy some time to compose himself and continue this fight. Once that doesn't work, he goes for another takedown, except this time, Carrington has a kick locked, loaded, and ready to go. I'm not sure if the kick was just that powerful, or if it was Kirby basically diving headfirst into it, or a combination of both, but either way, Carrington knocks out Kirby and secures a win for his debut fight. Heading just barely to the north, we have the Ohio Combat League 10 in Newark, Ohio. This is night one of a two-day event, but we'll get to the second event soon, don't you worry. Here we have Jaden Maddox in the blue against Bobby Kelly in the red, both making their amateur debut. This one is short, sweet, 
and to the point, boom, yep, one punch knockout. There unfortunately wasn't any footage of the rest of the fight available to us, but Jaden Maddox lands a win and a big knockout for his highlight reel and hopefully has more to come in his career. Now, on to the second fight of the Ohio Combat League weekend. We have another amateur debut between Avery Gonzalez in the red and Ronald Castaneda in the blue. I don't know what they're feeding these fighters up in Ohio, but whatever it is apparently produces knockouts. Another short one with minimal footage, unfortunately, but the left to right hook was just too clean to not include in this list. Ronald absolutely whiplashes and knocks out Gonzalez in just 14 seconds, landing his first win. We are just showing the USA some love today, so now we have Icon Fighting Federation 5 in Biloxi, Mississippi. Here, we have the Jorge Masvidal protege, Charlie Decca, wielding a 2-0 pro record against Kyle McGuff, who has only one fight on his pro record. Decca is showing ultimate dominance in this entire first round, and once he secures the full mount, it is about to be game over via devastating elbows. After five elbows, two punches, and one bloody face, the ref calls a stop to this fight and Decca secures the win, improving his record to 3-0. Decca is absolutely absolutely someone we can see in the future on a larger scale if he keeps his pace up and learning from some of the best like Masvidal. We have one more at the Icon Fighting Federation 5. This fight sees Griffin Fisk making her pro debut and Alexandra Ballou looking for another win for her 1-0 pro record. Fun fact about Ballou, her only other pro fight was actually against Lisa Blaine at Bellator 207, which she won. It appears she was released from Bellator after this fight for reasons I just wasn't able to find. Unfortunately though, Baloo won't have as much luck this time. Fisk is grinding for the rear naked and decides a tight backpack rear naked choke is the way to go. Although, props to Baloo for holding in there for almost 20 seconds, but eventually she is out cold and they tumble to the ground. Fisk lands a win in her pro debut and adds a great submission to her record. For the final event of the day, we have Fury FC 44 in Houston, Texas. Here, we have Carlos Vergara showing a 7-2-1 pro record against Jacob Silva, who has a not-so-great 6-4 record, and both are fighting for the flyweight belt. Another fun fact, Silva actually appeared on Dana White's Contender Series twice later last year, and both resulted in losses. This one is an absolute barn burner, going back and forth for almost three full rounds, Silva seems to have an edge over Vergara, but once Vergara lands a nice left sending Silva down, the ground and pound will bring an end to this fight. Vergara climbs to an 8-2-1 pro record and is now the new Fury FC flyweight champion and hopefully continues on this stride. We can literally not thank Kaposa enough for doing this week in and week out, so please go give him a follow on Twitter at Grabica underscore Hitman for more fights just like these throughout the week. And also, you can support him on his Patreon at patreon.com backslash Kaposa. Thank you again as well to all of these great organizations for putting on these events and to the fighters, winners and losers, and we will see you guys on the next video.